comments, suggestions, petitions, or residents in attendance regarding items not on the agenda. Seeing none, we'll move on to item three, which is discussion items, and A is the director's report. Hey there. Is this on? No. Is this on? It is on. Happy New Year in February. Um, okay. So not too much to discuss. I did have an update. Um, I'm not sure if this will be discussed elsewhere, but um, Susan Hamley, Susan Hamley, is that her name? Uh, did send an update about the Brandywine Valley wayfinding signage, and we were approved from, for an extension due to a backlog for fabrication and in, installation suppliers. So production is anticipated May through October. I think this is our final extension, but she was optimistic that we would get it done. So this is the the Miami Vice signs that we're re replacing. So that is good news for us. Um, I think you all must might have seen the daily local, but we did upgrade the um, park systems, the entry systems at the garages. So we do have, um, it's called Flash. And these are cashless systems. Um, I think they're all fully functional at this point. There was a, a little hiccup with the Google Pay, Apple Pay, but right now you can, um, monthly parkers can access their, um, their accounts by license plate readers now, so there's no more cards needed. And to enter the garages, you put a credit card, you can put a credit card in and leave with a credit card, so you can have a pretty seamless transaction. You can also print a uh, ticket and do it that way, and there's, a, there's pay on foot stations just as there used to be. Um, we are also going to offer pay by QR code, so you can scan the QR code and pay right from your phone. And um, I think it was a little bit of a bumpy install. It did happen during the snowstorm. <laughs> so it was not the best timing, but also kind of a good time because it was when the gates had to go up for snow emergency. So um, it's in, we're, it's in, it's done. We're working through it. But um, thank you to all the monthly parkers that were patiently uh, participating in it. Uh, I am very excited about it. I do think there were so many issues with the cards jamming that we will recoup a lot of the um, money we were losing by having to let people out of the gates. And next up, we will be working on validations and working with uh, local businesses on ways to utilize the validation codes. Um, I did want to know how everyone felt about considering possibly, uh, I, I had heard some council members mention doing a town hall regarding parking and permitting for 2024. I know it's a hot topic. I just wanted to plant the seed. Uh, I don't know how it would work. I don't really want a bunch of angry people coming, but I thought it would be helpful to maybe have a civilized conversation, maybe if we did it in wards or quadrants to hear from residents about their parking needs, wants, uh, considerations, so we can consider planning for the future, especially with the land development that we have coming into the borough. Because um, I know Smart Growth is considering tackling parking, and we are too. So I just wanted to mention that so we can maybe considering having a town hall or some sort of survey, anything, I'm open to it. I can take the heat. I like it. Okay. I, I, I like it. Mm -hmm. I want, I think a survey, like a, a standard board with a QR code survey yeah. would be a really awesome first step. Um, I think a guided town hall. Yeah. There's, I've gone to multiple meetings that is not about parking and it ends up really angry and about parking. And <laughs> it, it's not, it's, it's fabricated parking issues. Most of the time, it's not, you know, if there, if there were real complaints, I would be bringing them immediately to you. And, yeah. but they're, they're possible complaints of what may happen if this and that, and yeah, I don't want to sit through a three hour meeting of people screaming about, 
possibilities. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe we could start with a survey then, or so I know we have an old survey that I can um, send to everyone. I don't know how relevant the information is now, um, but we could look at the questions and consider something like that. Yeah, the survey might help drive the topics. And I agree with you. We don't want it to be a free for all, right? We want yeah. to have an agenda. We want to have it time bound and you know, very focused. Yeah, I mean, I definitely want to come at this with a solution based, you know, problem solving situation. Um, but I'll, I'll try to think of a way we can work on that as a team. Um, and then lot five, um, the Methodist Church has been great. Uh, Reverend Brooks and I have been working together. Uh, they have the hang tags. We are coordinating. They're distributing them. I was a little slow on getting the signage up, but I am. Uh, I picked. We picked up the signs from Goshen Signs, so we should have that lot ready to go for enforcement um, in the next couple of weeks. I think by the 23rd was the date that Pastor Brooks and I decided on. Um, but they've been great. Um, the hang tags look good, and then we'll work together on making sure that everybody understands the rules. Um, and the signage that we did, a Public Works and I decided on, will also help the public understand that that is a public lot. So there's a couple of signs that will be placed on the street that say, you know, public parking until we put the wayfinding bid out to bid this year for helping get everybody to our lots. So. That's good, thank you. Cool. Um, revenue. Ticket revenue for January was 86,700. I'm sorry, I do not have December's here for comparison. I should have done that and I'm sorry. Uh, posting revenue was at 1,084.15. The lease revenue here is at 1,500 and this does not include, um, some, of the, some of our lease revenue is still going to finance. So we're gonna work on consolidating our lease revenue to the parking departments, that's a reporting issue. Um, meter revenue was 136,454.14. Oh, and I should mention over the month uh, months of December and January, uh, Monica, who is over there, who has been very, very, like ran this entire project, uh, Monica and Corday pulled every meter in the borough off the streets and certified and fixed pretty much every single and inventoried every single parking meter in the borough. So thank you for that. Um, so that should help with the meter revenue. So um, we're at 136,454.14 for that. Permit revenue was at 1,622. Booting was at 300, food trucks 300, and the total revenue was 141,260.29. Any questions? I have a question on the on the posting. Yes. When we do the postings, uh, is it and specifically the one that I'm going to talk about the first block with 300 West Minor Street. Mm -hmm. The signs were up for quite a while, and the um, the uh, officers uh, didn't patrol those those signs. Uh, the construction never came. Uh, is 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 that a normal practice that we have when when somebody pays for signs? Because if they would have showed up, we would have had to tow cars. Okay. We we, had, we would have towed twenty cars, uh, and the signs were clearly put up mm -hmm. on Friday nights, you know, for Monday morning. And uh, uh, the 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 problem with with the issue is that I had mm -hmm. was that. We have allowed that block to look at those signs twice now. And if we put them up a third time, and now we're gonna to have to tow their cars, they're gonna say, we didn't do anything the last two times. Yeah. So what, what, what's our policy on that? So postings are not, there's not a great science to them because typically we'll post and we rely on the the requester to notify us when they need the enforcement. Um, we don't go out and enforce until we're called because some job sites don't show up on time. So we'll wait to be called for enforcement. Yeah, so um, we don't have a great system for it yet. I did talk to Public Works the other day about, you know, trying to coordinate 
about working within the eights to 11 so that we wouldn't have to post so often and so the blocks would be cleared so that it would be less of a nuisance to residents um you know and we would have a better schedule to say look this is when the blocks are cleared you guys are already off the blocks and it wouldn't involve signs string which i'm so sick of looking at you know and enforcement um so that's a consideration but right now typically we leave it up to the requester to ask us to come enforce on an as needed basis because we don't know because they will sometimes park their construction vehicles in those areas and then we don't know which cars to enforce on unless they're there so yeah uh, it, it, it's it's a habit forming thing yeah that if they, you know, um i have a famous person that lives on my street mm -hmm. that that she loves to pay parking tickets mm -hmm. and uh uh I just love it, but it's a, the, the, but she sits, she parks in front of that no parking sign yeah. all the time. And I don't want her to, you know, knock on my door and say, look, that sign was up for three weeks and I, I didn't get a ticket. And I'll tell her, you, you know, you won parking then. Yeah. Because you didn't get a ticket that week. I mean, the rule is if the sign is posted and there are dates and times on it, don't post there if you don't want to run the risk of getting ticketed and towed. I understand that, you know, there might not be the work done during that time. Um, and we and we can look into that and be, you know, maybe there's some way to be more punitive. We did shorten the lengths of times that people can post so that they have to renew their postings instead of having months of postings out there um, so that, you know, blocks aren't displaced for no reason. But maybe we shorten the time frame so that they have to renew it so that they can't have it just hanging there. Yeah, yeah. Anyone else? Okay. Thanks. We can move on then to the garage management report. Good evening, everyone. Well, my name is Steve Maiden. I'm the city manager for M Park. Um, just a quick revenue uh, recap for the for the month of January. Uh, both garages uh, was at 170, 973. Uh, the expenses came in at 72, 519, uh, netting a uh, a profit of ninety eight thousand four hundred and fifty four dollars. I know Ramsey spoke a little bit about the, uh, the the garage upgrades and what we went through um, with those uh, through those days. Um, I see that you had the report up there. My apologies, um, but nonetheless, uh, the garage update is completed. Uh, we believe that we we may have some hiccups here and there, like you, like you stated, with regards to Apple Pay or. Or Google Pay, but for the most part, I think we're through the uh, through the hard part at this point. Um, and looking future for the for the future with regards to technology such as the validations for hotel and, and what have you for your for your uh, area businesses. Um, so everything that we're going to do moving forward is going to be communicating with regards to technology and everything that we're going to work with with the uh, council with is going to be with, with regards to the technology and what flash who we who you've chosen to to represent. The garages can offer to us. We have other applications in the city of Philadelphia and and and, and uh, the area around uh, Philadelphia that uses the technology. LPR is a, a huge upgrade for us, and uh, we're excited for the uh, for the partnership. And I want to thank you for allowing us to be a part of it. That's really it. Any questions? Oh yeah, Parkwiz. How did I miss that? Because that's part of the technology piece. So Parkwiz. Uh, so one of the things that we were asked for. So uh, Ramsey alluded to uh, the, the the digital checkout, where somebody's going to be able to pay for their for their transaction as they leave. The other good thing that we're going to be able to do is is partner with a company called Parkwiz, who Flash works with, uh, to be able to sell the garage in advance. So we'd be able to maximize those that are coming to the to the barrow or looking for parking in the barrow. To be able to sell a spot ahead of time and to attract folks to the garage. What, the, what does that mean? I mean, so right now we can't sell a spot the next day for the previous day, if that makes sense to you. So we're hoping that we, uh, we can attract some, uh, some, uh, some activity to the garage as people are looking for things to do in the area and then they see a garage in Westchester. We would be the first and only parking, uh, parking uh, I guess, promoted. Uh, entity on Parkways. So that's pretty exciting. But again, that technology that we have affords us the opportunity to be able to sell that in advance, sell those spaces and be able to uh, to collect the revenue. 
in advance, reserve a spot for the uh, for the Parker, and then uh, again become more more technologically driven as we as we uh, as we serve our public. I I am very happy to have Parkways in Westchester. I think that's going to be. It, it's it's a small thing that's going to make a big difference for some of our. Use it anywhere else. I have, I have. It, it, it's huge in the city of Philadelphia. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's definitely a it's definitely something that we can we can help uh, uh, sell. The yes, space. exactly. So that's, that's I, I think that's a big a I, big I, ad. So thank you very much. Get me excited. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Are there any questions or comments? All right. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you. Appreciate your time. We'll move on to the notification process for ordinance 2022 11 Adam Street. So this is the running, you know, uh, running discussion item. I did talk to building and housing and they notified me that um, the preliminary final plan has been submitted for this property. Final plan, the final plan. Um, so I don't know what the timeline of that is. They're going to planning commission this month for that. Um, yes, there will be discussion this month, but no action until March. Okay. Um, so I, you know, I know Sue did a count this evening and there were around 40 cars parking there. So this will displace about 40 cars when we do officially, um, make the change to make it a no parking area. So just be, we, we need to be mindful of that and consider the timing. I know we talked about consideration of um, students and, you know, how to notify them. I do know, I, I, we drove down there the other day. I know there's a few box trucks, but I do see a lot of kids parking there and walking the distance to some of the apartment buildings. So, um, you know, I, I don't know if we need to do it now, but just, you know, be mindful that that will put kids in other spots. Um, when we do, like, I'm assuming we're sticking things under windshield wipers. Are, are yeah, we, we have warning tickets that we can give them and we can put up signs. So there's, you know, there's ways for us to notify them, but it's where will they go? Um, can we include on those notifications uh, QR codes that will take them immediately to monthly garage spaces and things like that that yeah. are going to be available. Yeah, and you know one of the things that we've really become aware of as we've redone the parking permits for the student rentals is that a lot of these students and I know it always comes down to money. Um, many of these student rentals not all of them, but a lot of them do have parking spaces, but they are charged higher rates, you know, $100, $50 a month. And so they want to forego that cost. And so they do try to find street parking. So it, it I understand that. Um, but, you know, sometimes there is stuff available. There are some rentals that really just ultimately don't have it. Um, but just want to put that, yeah, but we'll try to find some places yeah, I just just include suggestions yeah. and and you know links to maps and and yeah. garage spaces that are available. There's a lot of misconceptions that there are no spaces in the garage that the borough is already filled up with their parking limits, and it's not true. Like yeah, there there are spaces available. There are places for people to park. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, even in. The winter now at night, I drive through, you know, at home when I go home at night and a lot of the, the surface lots are pretty empty. I know it's not free, but we do stop enforcing at 10 p.m. on some of the weeknights and with the Flowbird app, it could be a little bit more manageable. So we can we can definitely try to help get some sort of graphic to give with that. Did you, have, did you want to make any comment? Any public comment? Sorry. <laughs> Ann Carroll, 506 South Franklin Street. Um, I think I, I think your suggestions are well placed. However, I think we have to be mindful that 
these are people who live in our neighborhood. There are no parking garages in our neighborhood. So if they're, you know, walking home from, and I've seen, I, I take my walk here every day along Adams Street, et cetera. They're walking to Matlack Street. They're walking to the apartments right there at the railroad, um, or they're housing their cars. If they're housing their cars, that's, that's where you come in. Um, but the other ones, I, I think we need to be mindful, and I would ask while we're doing the final land development that we have a conversation with the developer for whom we are eliminating this parking that belonged to people who are residents in our community. And as a result, perhaps he might be generous, as he's being right now, to a Dewey Pile trailers that are parking on that lot that everybody's contemplating as the skateboard bar park or something, um, that maybe that might be available in an interim basis. And if this is going to happen before the end of the school year and he's gonna start moving the equipment in in April or May, that's gonna be a mid-year adjustment that, that we need to at least help people with. And the other concern that I have living on the 500 block of South Franklin and the 500 block of South Adams, both of which are permit, but only Monday through Friday. We get parked out already every weekend. Already we are parked out every weekend. So when this parking disappears, weekends are a problem. We have no ability to create off-street parking. So I would ask you to keep that in mind. Thanks. We're going to move on to 4A, a motion to approve the draft lease for Lot 7, Chestnut Street, and Darlington Street. I'll go. Okay. <laughs> Hi, good evening. Uh, Sigmund Fleck, I represent Brian McFadden. Brian wanted to be here, but he tested positive and I encouraged him to take the night off. Uh, we just really wanted to come in, say hello. Uh, I hadn't had the pleasure yet. Um, tell you where things are from our perspective. We have a uh, draft MOU that your solicitor sent over to us midweek last week. Brian and I went over it on Friday, um, maybe before he had uh, his dates out that resulted in his positive tests, I hope. And uh, I got him his changes back on Monday, but he's under the weather. He hasn't had a chance to review it yet. And I haven't had a chance to connect with Kristen. Uh, so, uh, but we're very, uh, we're excited to move things forward. We're looking forward to working with Ramsey and the borough to get this ironed out and smooth, smoothed out for the future. So, really all I came for tonight. Safe thank smoke. you. Thank you for coming and thank you for saying hi and thank you for not for <laughs> not coming when he's sick. Um, but I, I'm looking forward to making this move smoothly and efficiently and in a very positive direction. Great. Were there changes? Oh yeah. Oh there were. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. Um, yeah there well there were a significant number of comments. There were things we didn't understand. It's it's kind of a, uh, it's a big change to go from ground lease to uh, what Kristen has prepared, which is a very short, concise memorandum of understanding. And there's a lot of changes in there. And we just wanted to understand some of it. And we had some feedback and some some questions and concerns, but I haven't heard back from Brian yet. And okay. uh, I expect I'll hear back from him, hopefully in the next day or so. He's pretty tough old bird, so. Um, and then once I hear back from him, then I'll be able to connect with Kristen and go over everything, go over questions, okay. these kind of things. Okay. Okay. So then I guess we should table this. Okay. All we'll right. Table it. <laughs> Let's table this okay. and we'll bring it up again. Thank That's okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for coming. Yeah, sure. Thank you all. All right, let's move on to motion to action item B, motion to schedule a hearing for amendment to chapter 77 and 104 parking program. So, yes, let me open this. 
So I tried to consolidate this. Um, there were a few things that we just needed to update um, in here. Sorry, I'm just, I tried to print it and did not have it available. Um, the first thing that we needed to modify, and I apologize because this was a mistake that I made <laughs> when I first started, um, the removal of the private property, which um, I, I mistakenly was under the impression that police could still enforce alternatively with some other, with that not being a local ordinance, that's not the case. So we need to put it back into our local ordinance. So that's the first change that's in here. So it's exactly as it was, um, we're just putting it back in. Um, the second is the two handicap spaces. One is the addition that was previously approved in parking committee and one is a removal that was previously approved. Um, sorry, I'm trying to be quick here. Um, the chapter 77 modifications, these are just minor modifications that as we had started redoing um, the permits with the changes for the residential permitting program, we noticed that there were some things that we had not put in the permit, um, like that the registration and the license both needed to be to the address for non-student rentals. So we're just asking to include that in here. One point that I did want to bring up that is clarified in portions of this, but that I would, I'd like to revise before work session. Um, we did change the word abut in a few of these areas to say um, in a residence that is located on the streets in the various permit parking. But I think there's a few spots that we missed. So if everybody's comfortable with that before work session, I'd like to find the other areas in chapter 77 that we missed to change the word abuts to also reflect that. Um, there's just a concern that the word abut is a little bit broad, so it would mean any house in certain areas instead of specific streets. Um, is everyone comfortable with us making that change throughout chapter 77 and modifying that before work session? I'm okay with that. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, and then this also includes the parcels that were to be added for building and housing to be excluded. We needed to add those four parcel numbers. So that's in this amendment as well. And I think that's it. So it's okay. it's a lot of amendments, but. <laughs> a lot of amendments that needed to happen. Yes. And they're not super fascinating. Yeah, but. <laughs> trying to, I'm trying to consolidate. All right. Um, so is everybody okay with that? Okay. All right. Thank you. Move on to C, a motion to approve resolution 2024-001, modifying residential permit areas. This is just one street happened to sneak. I don't know how it was in there, but it needs to be removed from the um, permit area. It should not be in there. And it was on South Brandywine. So this is just to remove one street um, because if we do not, it's brand new one street, the west side thereof between Market and Woolerton Alley. I don't know how it ended up in there, but it would somehow, in, it would include an entire apartment complex that should not have ended up in there. Thank you. Is everyone okay with that? Okay. And then D is a motion to approve December 2023 parking committee meeting minutes. Approved. Approved. Thank you. Any other comments? Daryl Cook, South Walnut Street. Oh, who is enforcing 10441 at this point? All right, motion to adjourn, 629.